Good morning and thank you all for joining us today. My name is Rashmita and I'm the event planner for Microsoft Reactor Bengaluru, India. The session will run over the next 90 minutes, including Q&A. The session is being recorded and will be uploaded to our Reactor YouTube channel. I will share the link to our YouTube channel in the chat section soon. Before we begin, please take a moment to read our code of conduct. We are all here to learn together, so please be respectful of other people's views, understanding of differences, being kind and considerate in the way you engage. The chat will be open throughout and we do encourage you all to participate. Also, please keep your mics muted during the session. I would now like to welcome Swami, our speaker for today's session. He is an aspirant software architect and currently works at Applied Information Sciences. He loves to learn about new technologies, but for now, I will hand over to Swami to begin the session. Over to you, Swami. Thanks, Rasmita. Hey, guys. Uh, good morning. Thanks so much for uh, joining. This is uh, session 19. So I have given the link of uh, previous I mean, the playlist which has got previous uh, 18 sessions. So let me share my screen. So please do let me know if you're able to see the screen. Yes. Okay, cool. I guess this is my uh, GitHub. So all the uh, series, which I speaking series, which I do will be here, like speaker series 20, 20, 20, 21, 20, 22. And if you go specifically, the reactor events will be under reactor. So from session nine, it's there in 2022. So before that, it will be in speaker series 2020. But this is the parent uh, repository. You can go and uh, check that. And let me quickly uh, tell that today's thing is this one, message-based solution. So let's take one quick minute to see what we are going to learn. So I've given the, I'm my learner, so apologize if I do any mistake. So that's uh, very important. And uh, this is MS Learn module. So you can click on this. That will give you exactly the MS module, which we are discussing today. So we'll be going through some of the topics, but mostly these sessions, we are focusing towards the hands-on piece. Uh, theoretical piece they have uh, given in-depth knowledge in this one so i'll be touching upon how to do versus what it is but we'll touch upon what what are we doing it and the source code i've given the link here so that will be uh, this social, this uh, folder itself the entire source code will be in the source directory and uh, what are we going to do we'll first start with uh, the messaging solution a different uh, use cases we'll see, and then explore uh, Azure Storage Queue and create and manage uh, storage queues and messages using .NET. And uh, we'll explore the Azure Service Bus, discover the Service Bus queues, topics, and subscriptions, and uh, the messages and payload serializations, and some of the things uh, purely hands-on. So if you see that, uh, first, we'll choose messages. We'll discuss about this, and we'll start exploring. Uh, we'll start exploring this uh, queues, storage queues first, and then we'll take it from there. So the MS Learn module, which we already have seen it here. So the introduction is like it just gives the queues. Why do you need queues in between? So there are a couple of scenarios. Imagine a scenario where you are retrieving some content from a database or some third party API. So the UI calls API Gateway. API Gateway calls the backend or a middle tier, which goes and talks either to the data store or it goes and talks to the third party API. And it's come, it comes back. Like payment, you are submitting a payment. So you swipe a card or do something, and then that the UI sends it to the API gateway. API gateway sends to the middle tier or backend, and that sends the message or the request to the third party payment processor, and it receives the message and it comes back to the UI. That's like a 
request response pattern. And here what happens is now UI calling API gateway, which calls the backend, backend calls the third party payment gateway. Imagine that guy calling another third party and that guy calling the database. So there are two, three middlemen in between us and the entire transaction. So everything is happening happening to the request response. So user has to steer the monitor while this entire uh, API calls or the request response happens. Maybe it's taking less than five seconds or something, but still you have to steer. And in this chain of calls, if at all a, a system or an API, which is taking longer than expected time, and it is failing there, so all the way you go from API gateway to backend, backend to uh, payment, third party payment, and he's calling his partner one and partner one calling partner two, and it is failing there before hitting the database. So you all the way you spend all this time and exception, exception handling, that's additional overhead and you'll come back. And uh, you might lose the payment or it might get deducted at one place and did not receive to the customer, a lot of things will happen and we'll get resolved. But in these kind of scenarios where you are doing a payment processing, so it, it's it is good to have the disconnected thing. Like you submit a payment and you drop a message and you forget. Your backend says that okay, UI is calling uh, API gateway, which is calling the backend system of our solution, which drops a message to a queue and sends the response back to the customer saying that, hey, we received your payment. So the payment might get processed or after one hour, they'll come and say that something went wrong. Uh, your product will not be shipped. You need to do a repayment. A lot of things we saw this kind of messages. Or it says that something went wrong and after some time when they do a reconciliation, they'll come back and say that, okay, the payment went through. So in this kind of disconnected things are good. So it depends upon the use case, whether you want to do a request response, if it is a plain vanilla call uh, to a database and spit it out to the screen, request response matches. But these kind of things where the transaction is must. So you need to ensure that the transaction doesn't fail. In these kind of scenarios, we definitely need to go with a message. <clears throat> okay, now coming back to this, is there are two kinds of messages we'll be seeing today, the storage queue as well as the service bus queue. And uh, choosing this, a lot of consideration when to choose A over B. So some of the point is like you need first in first out guarantee. And uh, you don't need to pull the queue. In, in case of storage queues, you need to pull the queue. Here it sends you a message like someone drops a message to the queue, you will get intimated, hey, someone dropped a message there. And uh, here when it goes more than 80 gig, this is less than 80 gig. And here 64K, here it will be a little bit higher, but we can do a uh, depth analysis. I have given one of the link. To, uh, yeah, this is the one you can see that um, ordering is guaranteed in storage queues. It's not in service bus, it is. And delivery guarantee at least once and at least once using peak law and at most once using receive and delete, like you can go through this uh, link where you can compare which solution best suits you. Uh, your, uh, your project, it depends upon what best suits, we have to choose that one. Okay, now let's start working with, first we'll understand what is Azure Storage Queue. And, uh, and then we'll start pure, working purely on the hands-on. So, Azure Storage Queue is like uh, storing large number of messages. We saw that more than 80, uh, 80 gig. It stores technically it stores millions of messages. That depends upon the storage capa capability. Okay, so the message queue is up to 64k, and the URL format it will be this. We'll see that there there will be a storage account, and inside that storage account there will be a queue, and and that queue will have one or more messages with seven days of expiry. Okay, that's a basic thing. Now, we learned this new technology, and now immediately when we want to implement, there are people who use server or any kind of thing. Uh, one tablet for uh, headache, heartache, and body pains. They use single tablet for all. 
So that will backfire. So imagine a scenario where you have learned about this good technology and you used it for spitting some data onto the screen. Imagine UI, it makes uh, get customers that calls an API gateway, which calls a middle tier. And this middle tier guy drops a message in the queue and that queue is being processed by the worker processing, which goes and speaks to the uh, repository. The data store brings the 10 records, drops it in a queue. That's a message. And this guy middle tier takes this message, serializes and sends it back to the API gateway, then sends to the UI. And this is an overkill, 100% overkill. And at the starting, you will enjoy. Imagine a scenario you're bringing five records or 10 records when you're doing it in local development. It, it is like a sunny day, happy day scenario. And you will go and enjoy the party that night when you write the code. Imagine Sarah, someone says that I need to bring 20 records. The moment you bring 20 records, that goes more than 64 kilobyte size and your code doesn't work. So the entire building which you constructed, it's of no use. People can't occupy. So it's something like that. So think through this, what you have to send as part of the message. So trying to get the records, give it to uh, another API, that's like a purely overkill and that might uh, backfire. How many people will bring in uh, records? 20 records or 10 records? Is it fitting within 64 kilobyte size? Lot of considerations to be. These things are there something like you have uploaded an image and that's there in a blob storage. You can specify that, okay, for this transaction or this uh, record, here is the blob. Can you process this? And you give it. And another worker process which reads this message, it goes to the blob storage location. It notes for this record ID, it processes image. Imagine you give a color photo, it converts into grayscale, and it puts in a process message queue and updates the record, saying that, hey, here is your color image, here is your grayscale image. It makes sense because you're sending the record ID and the blob storage location and other few details, very, very minimalistic details you're sending it as part of this one. Those kind of things definitely make sense, but bringing in set of records through queues. For me, it, it is like an overkill or it might backfire. I'm, I'm not sure, but I'm uh, thinking that that might backfire. OK, let's uh, start playing with this now. Uh, and going through this uh, certification, AZ104 or AZ204 or 305 or any certification, you have to create a lot of resources. And uh, every time we were doing it through the portal, let's try this for five minutes. We'll not create it, but we'll create it in another manner. So we'll come here just to understand our card. Let's say create. Ah. I'm gonna create a storage account. And let's click on create. We'll give the storage account name. And we'll select this we have seen when we are creating the blob storage. So we'll go step by step, step by step. And once we create it, then we'll come back and enable the uh, queues. So that's one way to do it. How many options do you click? And uh, OK, let's assume that I don't need to click that. I just directly go and uh, say that. I just come here I just create. I'll give the name what has to be created. I don't navigate through advanced networking, data protection, encryption, and tags. I just then click on review and create. Imagine a scenario somewhere in encryption, a hypothetical scenario I'm telling that. Some option has been enabled that is in the good interest of the customer. It has been enabled and they're charging one rupee every five minutes. In that case, what happens is you don't know what option has been selected. You create the resource, you use it. After one week, you come and you'll see that there are thousands of rupees on your billing. So it's like a trade off whether you do this or whether you do that. So the other best mechanism is every time you do it, it has to create. OK, so one of the way there are a lot of ways to do it. So imperative way, declarative way, programmatically you'll create resources. OK, we'll see two of the ways to create it. One is using this JSON template, ARM templates. 
which is like it does an incremental mode if the resource group is there, but it is not doing damage. But if you do a complete mode, it might do a damage. So you need to ensure that that is an incremental mode. That means this resource group already exists and it has got few resources. So whatever we are creating through this ARM template, it has to create only the differential thing. OK, it should not dismantle the existing resource group and start creating what is there here. So it's like an incremental mode. If at all two resource groups, uh, two resources are already there and this is the third resource, it has to go. If it is the second resource, but you are adding some functionality, it's it has to add those features. That's it. It should not touch the previous one. So this is one of the way to do it. And you can ask, how do I know how to create this uh, JSON templates? I have no clue. So you don't need to worry about it because simple thing. You come to Google and say that uh, Azure storage queue. Now, using ARM templates. That's it. So you can come here. There are tons and tons of things are there. You don't need to worry about it. So they have already created lots and lots of things are there. You can come in here and they will give you and what is the template and how to execute. You can pretty much check this one. OK, they have given a complete knowledge on this one. You don't need to worry about it. They will give a button also where you can go and use it. So here also you can see that deploy to Azure or you can go and click on this uh, Azure Quick Start, browse it. So a lot of people, they already do it. So they give in the bicep, which is the latest one, pretty similar to uh, Terraform. And uh, here you can see this service bus queue. They've given the uh, deploy and parameters. So what uh, service bus queue, what is that you're doing? You're creating a service bus namespace and you're creating a, uh, uh, these are the parameters which you're creating. And here, if you see that the uh, resources, it is creating two resources. One is the namespace for the service bus and then it is creating the queues. That's it, pretty simple, 65 lines. You don't need to worry. I mean, people say that there's a lot of things in this uh, ARM template, I'm worried I'll learn bicep. Okay, you can learn bicep. That's uh, That looks pretty simple, but what is happening behind the scene is if you go to these, uh, if you go to these templates, you see this, the bicep, it is generating the ARM templates only. ARM template is going nowhere. It's going to stay for a long time. The biceps is translating into ARM templates for us. Okay, that's one way to do it. And other way is there are, uh, you can create it through the uh, Visual Studio code itself. So this has got a very good uh, extension, ARM templates extension. So see that ARM template from Microsoft Azure Resource Manager. So see this, this template itself has got lots and lots of things. You see this, you type um, arm and bang and tap, that gives you this one. And you go ahead and see this one, like you want to create a storage account, you type this uh, arm storage and do a tab. Anything like variables or functions, anything you need it, lots and lots of templates are already there, snippets, you do it. Okay, this is also you can't do it. Fine, that is also fine. I'll show you another shortcut how to create it. So first thing is go to a new resource, uh, new resource. Don't have anything, if, even if it is happening, like a, a dummy thing. Now what we will do is we'll, do, we'll just go and quickly we'll create it and then we'll compare with ARM template, which we have. I'm going to uh, default it to everything just in the interest of time. So let me select it under Robbie. Yeah, there's the one. And SD for delete July 2022. Okay, and the rules of the game we already know. I'm just clicking on create. Or else, let's take one minute time. Let's go through this at once. Whatever the options which it is there, we'll see. It's by default hot tier. And everything, the data protection, whatever it is, we'll keep it. Everything will keep it, tags, review and create. 
and I'll just create. And at this point of time, you can click on download template for automation. That's one option. OK, even you don't want to do that. That is fine. Because download the template is what it just creates the story record. You can ask for me, what if I create a queue? How do I know that? Where should I insert that block of code and what are the dependencies for this piece? I don't know. That's true. Even I don't know. Let's explore it. How to do that? OK, let's spend a couple of minutes here. This is worth exploring. Because every time you don't need to come and wait for this many seconds or minutes to uh, see the resources are getting created. And anytime you miss one option, gone. And one more thing. Imagine a scenario, a new option has come and you forgot to enable. Gone. A lot of things are there. Let's give it a minute. Go to resource. Sometimes for some reason, I don't know why it doesn't show. Now if I go back to the resource group, Robbie, now it shows. How? Oh, come on. <laughs> See that? It, it has showed. Now let's imagine you are coming to this. There are no queues. OK. Demo queue. Uh, 2022. OK, we just created this queue. OK, that's perfect. So what we can do is come back to the resource group and scroll down. There is something known as export template. So when you click on this export template, it gives you all these options. Now you can see this what resources it is creating. It is creating a resource um, of this uh, storage account and a bunch of options whatever the options which we went through and then it is creating a blob service and then it is creating a file service and then it is creating a queue service with the default and then if we come here under queue service queues we have created a demo queue so from our perspective from our perspective what is very important is we need this storage account okay and we don't need this blob service. And we don't need this file service at this point of time. And we definitely need the queue service. And we don't need this table service. And we definitely need queue service slash queues. So these three blocks are needed. The first block is the, the storage account. And the second block, what we need is this queue service. And inside that queue service, we are creating it. That's it. So these are the three things which are pretty much needed. So you can use this formula anywhere you want to create the template. You can get the base template in uh, uh, repositories in GitHub. They have this uh, Azure Quick Start template. They have hundreds of templates and just go do a Google. You'll get a template and on top of that. What? How do you explore? Just go ahead and create uh, what you want. Customize it. Ensure that those has been incorporated. So let's see that at this point of time, our ARM template. Let me come back here and come back to this one. And just for one minute, I'll just delete it. ARM and bang. So it has come. So now under resource, what do you want to create? OK, next storage accounts. Now do a tab. OK. Right, so you don't need to sweat anything at all. So now you need to something, something else. Q. See, service was Q. Just do a tab. Everything it, it is creating. Only thing you need to know that what specific items you wanted. Whether you want a max size 1024 1 MB or 64K, and what is the max delivery count? You need to know at least this much, like what options you need to select there which what is the corresponding you don't know that but you know like it should be ma max size go ahead and create it in the portal then come back export the template and then come back and modify this it's as simple as that you you're seeing that now if you want a key vault okay arm key vault and arm secret so i type it so i got an arm key vault. i don't know what it is but we have a flexibility use it so just that's it Anything you wanted, you can get it here 
with this uh, tool set. Okay, let me delete all this thing. I want to show the power of see this just an arm and bank symbol here, the bank symbol, and just do a tap, you get it. Okay, first you need to redo that. Okay, cool. How simple it is. So let me revert it back. Okay, this is the uh, template. I bought it from the quick start itself. You see that this the generator is bicep. So here, what is very important is I, I uh, will not worry about the parameters. What is important is only three blocks. The first block is the storage name, and it will not fail because they are not going to dismantle this API version because 2021-0901, for that API, these are the parameters. Definitely, they will not do a breaking changes. No company will do a breaking changes knowingly. So whatever is there, until they support this API, this ARM template will work. If there is a breaking change, then it will not work. But as long as this API version exists, definitely this template will work. If you use it like a PowerShell or command line uh, AZCLI, it will work. When you bump up the version of this uh, PowerShell and Azure CLI, if they update and do a breaking change or the parameters has changed, we are not guaranteed that it is going to work. But the ARM template will work for sure. Okay, guys. So let's uh, see that this is a queue service. So what is the name which it is creating? We'll see only the name. Uh, storage account name. Let's go to the parameters. And inside the parameters, it is uh, store. It starts with store store and it generates a unique stream. OK, let's see that. OK, just for the sake, I will increase this and I'll do dot deploy. OK, there are three files, arm templates deploy. I do ls hyphen l. So you see that I've given a execute uh, access to this one. And there's a deploy. It's just internally it is executing az deploy group create. And there's a resource group. There's a template file and there's a parameter file. OK, and you can see that that resource group already have these three four items. It's already there. So it is like an incremental mode of the deployment. It's not doing any destructive thing. I do a deploy and I go ahead and click on that. The storage queue, it's getting created. While it is getting created, let's switch the case. It's it's going to take time. Let's come back and see what is there uh, for us in the next discussion. We have seen that that's going to work. Let's get into the storage browser. OK, so we have already seen in the previous session how to use this uh, Azure Storage Explorer as well as the storage browser, two things. But let's play at least uh, Hello World of this here. I will go to this one and I already created one, but we will work on the one which we created. OK, we can do in this uh, storage uh, Azure Storage Explorer. OK, we can use it. You can download that that we have seen that the Windows application. And now this is the storage browser they built in here. Now you can come in here and you can see this is the queue and uh, you can see the URL as we have seen in the documentation. And uh, let's see, there are a bunch of messages here. And if I click on this message, you see that the message body is here. And in one of the previous session, we worked on the Azure functions and that Azure functions will pull the queue trigger. Whenever you drop a message to the queue, it will go and it will uh, uh, trigger that Azure function. Like we can do a DQ message. So that means the first message will be deleted. Now DQ another message. The second message is deleted. And imagine a scenario when you uh, when any of the application DQs a message and it crashed in between. So that means it's gone. So that particular queues information or the state of that application is gone. You you can't uh, retrieve. So let me clear this. And how do you add a message? I can go here. And I can create like uh, JSON kind of thing, order ID A101, and price, a simple one, 101.98. Okay, that's the JSON. And you're saying expires in this one, so I'll make it one day. 
and I'll just create it. We have our message. So it's the message is there. Now you want to DQ that message. We can do a DQ of that message. OK, this is already this is created now. So let's come back and do a refresh. We should see another storage account here. The store and it created the unique one. You can see that it has created and it has created the queue and the queue we can we are able to come inside the queue and we are able to see this. Everything has been created. We didn't click even a single button, but it's a one time investment when you're creating these kind of uh, declarative uh, templates, maybe the bicep, SAM or Terraform, whatever the mechanism which you're using it, but those will be backed up with one set of APIs. So as long as that there is no breaking changes in that API, it's guaranteed that these resources will be created. It's as simple as that one. So let's uh, uh, let's stop here and go to the programming piece. OK, I think you guys understood a decent hello world 30,000 foot. Like what is a storage account? What it has got? We have containers. We have seen this to a decent extent, and we have seen that tables in the Azure functions when we are discussing. Fisher is not in the syllabus, but at least we have seen these two when we are working on uh, Azure function. And uh, now we are working on this queues. At this point of time, you can see that there are no queues. So how do you interact? We can go back to the storage account, get the access keys. And uh, let me grab the. This one. OK, it's been copied. Now let me come back here. I don't need that now. I will come into this one and a small. Program is there. We'll, we'll look into this, what it is. And I am I've given the uh, app settings at all the places, but as I was mentioning, I would strongly suggest when you are working, always use the manage user secrets. Please don't go by the. Please don't go by this. App settings, you need to have the app settings, but that is oh Jesus. That is basically for the team to the DevOps team or the team who deploys it. It's just only for them to know that or your fellow programmer who is working on this project, he should know that what all the things which are needed. So always use the secrets.json because that's stored outside C, C users, Lord Krishna, and that's from the C drive. But if you see this is inside the GitHub, so this is outside the repository. I always suggest that please use the secrets. So let's see this. What is that we are doing here? So it's very simple. We are adding the configuration builder. We are adding app settings as well as user secrets. For that, we need a couple of uh, NuGet packages. So these are the NuGet packages because this is a console application .NET 6 and uh, Microsoft extension configuration as well as this user secrets and uh, Azure storage queues is another library with which we'll interact with the queues. And uh, we are grabbing these two values and uh, creating the queue client. So if you come into this queue client here, it's just creating new queue, new queue, queue client and I'm sorry, I'm not able to pronounce queue client and it is sending it here. And then we are creating a queue. So what it does is it comes and it verifies if the queue exists. It's OK. If not, we will create it. I just wrote a I mean, I. I just. Customize the code, whatever was given here. It's not my intelligence. I used this as a base code and did some facelift here and there. OK, see, I've given the link from where I. Uh, I took this and uh, customized it because some place I thought that this is a better way to do it. See, I'm uh, at all these places they used to do it. Uh, creative uh, not exist, and then if condition was there, I reversed it. Ensure that Q exists. If it not exists, go and create it. So that's already there. And uh, the next thing what we will see is we'll drop bunch of messages. OK, we just create list of messages and inserting all these messages like peak messages like it brings in the message and uh, and it. Uh, it doesn't. 
it doesn't delete. Second. Okay, this one peak. So peak is what it brings in the message, but it doesn't delete it so that you know other guys can process. But until unless we say that, okay, go and delete it. I'm complete. I'm done with my this thing. Okay, update the message and uh, we'll see that what is there in the peak message. The peak message is in, we are again ensuring that queue exists and we are bringing peak message as seen. So that's going to bring, bring number of messages and out of all those messages, we are just printing the body of the first message. An update is what you're getting the message out. Okay, all the messages you're receiving it and out of that re received message, we are just updating one message. Okay, then we are calling update message async and DQ is what is little bit destructive. Once you DQ it, if the if this uh, program or the process crashes, then no way you know that it's there. Okay, and uh, in the DQing the messages, we are printing the message ID and the prop receipt and the message body. OK, and also deleting the message also here. Right, so that's it. So let's work step by step on this one. I'll close all tabs and open this and we'll go step by step. So the first thing is uh, ensure that Q client exists. I'll put a debugger there and we'll switch between the uh, windows. This one, I'll just. Move this outside so that we'll know. We'll know this. Here. You see that there are no messages. And let me switch back to this one. And we'll get into that code. OK, so it ensure that the queue exists. OK, so the queue exists, so it didn't do anything. So we, we jumped out of that. OK, uh, we are returning true. Now, now what we are doing is we are generating set of a bunch of messages. So let me come to the next debug point. OK, now we are, we are saying that now we have list of messages. Now three messages or five messages, whatever the number of messages, it is the list of messages. Now I'm getting into that uh, here and you can see that we ensure that the message exists and uh, we see this. We said send message, then we can come back and do a refresh. And you can see this this message at 942. Now this message has been created and the send message receipt. You can uh, see this object, whatever it received. It has got an expiration time insertion, insertion time message ID and receipt. Right? And these are the details we have it. So what I'll do is I'll just do a shift F11 so that it executes all these things. Now let's come back and see that how many messages are there. There are five messages. That's what we were expecting. And now what we are doing is we are doing the peak messages. Let's do a uh, get into this. Now we are saying that peak messages. Now let's come back to this one and see that we are bringing in the First message. We did the peak message, and that's the 94042. The first message it got peaked out. Okay, we are writing the body of that, and I do an shift F11. I'm out. Okay, now update message is there. So now let's see all these things are here. Right? So now what we are doing is that update message is true. We will change the foreground to yellow and then get into this. Here, ensure we are receiving uh, messages. How many messages? Uh, one message, because we didn't specify how many messages to bring in. We bought one of the messages. And what we are doing is we are updating the contents. So, see this, this is the updated content. Now, we are saying that updating the content, you can see that updating what was the previous message, updating number one simple message so and so two simple message so and so and updated contents these two lines are getting added there right and then we are updating it that's done now let's come back to this one and then we are saying that delete message is true so now i'll come in here now 
is saying the DQ message. We are getting the Q properties. And within the properties, one of the item is approximate max count. So that means there are five messages in the uh, five messages in the queue. That's what it is telling us. The five messages, this is the updated content. You are seeing that there was only one line. We have added another line here. And now uh, what I'm telling is message to retrieve true. So till now, whenever we said that receive messages, it was giving one. Now we are adding the to get two messages. So we got two messages and uh, the first message and then we are saying that delete. OK, so the message should technically be deleted. OK, so. The message is technically deleted. We are back. And then press any key. You can see that means we created a queue if it is not existing. If it is existing, it ignores, but if not, it creates it. And we inserted five messages. We updated one message. We deleted two messages. OK, so that's about the queue storage. And let me check that. Did I miss any of these topics? We have covered at high level what the message solution is. We discussed a uh, few scenarios when to use what. And there are a lot many scenarios, but we touched upon few. And uh, we did explore the storage account and uh, how to create it and why should we uh, more depend on a declarative manner or any. Uh, and this helps us in creating first step towards the infrastructure as a code. Okay. So anytime you put it this one, today you created one queue. Tomorrow you might add another queue. Okay, demo queue two, demo queue three. So what is happening is it's incremental. It's doing an incremental deployment. That means it's not destructive as well as when you store this inside your source control, you know that how we have progressed. So in June, July month, we had only one queue. In August, we might add two more queues. In September, we come back to we'll delete one queue and it is only two queues. So when you go back to the source control, you'll know how we have expanded and shrinked in this uh, queue. We touched upon uh, Azure Storage Explorer, the Windows application, and this time again we came back and did a hello world of uh, things, how to play around with this queue message and what is DQ. And also to a decent extent, we have seen multiple things, how to create queue, how to insert, how to speak a message, and how to update a message, how to a DQ message. We have seen different things. I mean, there were uh, things to delete the queue, but I I thought that let's not do it and I ignored that piece. And uh, let's come back to this one, Azure Service Bus. So let me go and I will delete that. I'm not deleting it. OK, so. While we are here, I just want to touch upon another thing also. If you come back here in our resource groups, I remember we had this one, the this or this should have our Azure functions. Yeah, this one. So this is the mini project Azure function. Let's check that. But I want to correlate while we are discussing about that. I want to correlate it. Uh, this is a GitHub uh, code change tracker. GitHub code change tracker. Let me create a duplicate of this and speaker series. Azure functions. This is 12. And, and that was in previous year. We'll spend that is very very important. Uh, we need to touch upon that one. Let's go into this one. 
Microsoft Reactor. Azure function, this is okay. December 8 and return. You go and see any project code. And don't your function. I think this one. The start of files. Yes, this is the one. Timer triggered was another function. Start of files. I think I am unable to find it. Just give me one minute. If not, we'll move on. I think if it is here, it should be in the documentation. Start of files. Yes, this is the one. Mini project three. Correct. We are here. So what happens is imagine a scenario. Uh, read from Azure Storage Queue. So it, in this, what is happening is in this uh, function JS. So anytime the queue, whatever is the queue name, if you specify, it goes and reads it. So this is the best thing. Imagine a scenario where one application is dropping a message and other disconnected application is reading a message. So you, you're not doing any polling here, but here the, here the Azure function is uh, here. The Azure function is uh, getting intimated that someone has dropped a message in the queue. So you you get it. So now imagine a scenario where you're building a big solution. So one application is dropping a message into that Azure storage queue. You don't need to poll it. You can do the polling, like how we wrote the console application, but other way to handle that is write a um, Azure function. And uh, the triggered action is the function drop a message in Azure queue storage. So anyone drop a message in the queue storage, that gets triggered and that entire queue item comes in. So please watch this episode. Um, um, I think that's the episode seven and eight. You watch the episode seven and eight. We have discussed in, in in depth on that one. Just wanted to touch upon so that you know you'll get a big picture how the things are shaping up. Okay, let's come back to this. Uh, it's a new resource group. Let's go and uh, get into the resource groups. Let's come up come and slightly touch up on this uh, service versus queues and we'll go around like we already did a comparison where you want uh, a guaranteed first in first out and at least once or at most once okay and uh, you, you need it with a blocking or non blocking and your multiple uh, push style mechanism it's it's a polling mechanism it's a push style that means when you drop a message it goes and hits uh, whether it's a processor or subscribers whoever they are it goes and does it now how do you receive you do a peek and lock and receive and delete now peek and lease and those kind of differentiations you you, you can see that uh, what all the things are there but uh, but that should be uh, pretty good enough uh, to uh, start with and if you do a decent uh, comparison what each things are uh, should be uh, should be good enough. OK, now you can see this uh, messaging uh, transfer business data, sales purchase, purchase orders, journals and. And inventory movements, so this statement when you're reading it, be very careful. Now at the starting of this, I told you see that uh, the maximum size of that. Um, whether it is a 1 MB or whatever the size it is. Let's go back and see that wherever somewhere we have seen the size. Um, service bus queues, it is 1 MB, I assume. If not, if I'm not wrong, it should be 1 MB. 1 MB limit. OK, and uh, can handle message up to 100 MB. But what I'm telling is the MB limit, keep that in mind whenever you're doing whether you want to return set of bunch of rows in this message or get them bunch of rows put it in some blob storage or somewhere somewhere i don't know where it is but 
give that piece of information that oh I put it in this te temporary table or table storage or Cosmos DB, whatever use your mechanism, but just pass the information that we have processed the data. Data is somewhere. Just give that information instead of bringing in the bunch of uh, records and putting it in this one. I don't know. It, even if it is working, it, it might work for you people, but be a little careful when you're choosing A or B. That's what I want to uh, give a tip there. And uh, decoupled application, as I was mentioning, like our application, we are selling books and there's a payment gateway. So customer swipes the card or keens the details of this payment, and we dropped a message to the payment gateway. Payment gateway is processing it, but we can say that, hey, we received your order, and we can we can stop there. But what happens is within next five, six minutes, when the payment gets processed, we'll update the record next time. When he goes and sees that in the portal, you will see that the message either gone through or it blew off. We say that, hey, the payment didn't go through. Please uh, do end this one. And topics and subscriptions, which I'm not going to touch upon here, like you create a topic and you put a message in the topic, bunch of applications who subscribed it. It, it might not be the same application or different applications, but each, is, each of them are getting a copy of this message, okay? And message session, we will definitely not have time for that to be going through. But at least if you see at a high level, you can see that the message size is 100 MB. We can at least bring those records, but I'm I'm speaking about the fastness or something where you just need to disconnectedly, you need to pass message between application A and application B and uh, let that application B process it store the output somewhere and send the message to process is saying that hey i process this message the content is here imagine a scenario where you upload a file and you need to create thumbnail so first application it uploads imagine a scenario there is an ui you uploaded your profile picture some size 1 mb or 2 mb but you need to create a thumbnail so what this application is doing is this application is saving it locally in the IIS or the server folder. Once that is done, imagine there is a web job. It picks up this picture which you have uploaded to the IIS. I'm taking IIS or the server's local folder, and this web job is picking up from that uh, IIS local folder, and it is uploading to the blob storage and dropping a message in the queue saying that, hey, the profile picture has been updated. And that message is being taken by some other processing Azure function. Let's take this Azure function. It takes that from unprocessed, put it in some process, update the SQL database, and drops a message in another queue saying that, hey, I've updated or processed this profile picture, and here is the record which has been updated. And the third Azure function, what it does is it takes this picture, creates a thumbnail, and sends information whoever has to be notified. So here what is happening is entire things are there, but from a user uh, user perspective, he's not waiting while all these things are happening. For the time being, even if it is taking five minutes or 10 minutes, but user is getting the control back in next one or two seconds. He uploaded it, the file gets uploaded to the uh, server's local, uh, local drive. So you don't wait any seconds there, he gets back. But at least for the time being, we'll show the default profile picture and default thumbnail until the process happens. Even if it is taking 24 hours, and for the 24 hours, user will see that his profile picture is not updated. That is, I think that should be fine until unless uh, there is a business requirement that immediately you have to see. But a default profile picture is there. Behind the scene, these three Azure functions are working and they get updated. So those kind of uh, scenarios, we can use it. So let's come and uh, play around this one. So this is the service bus queue we have created. So you can see that uh, in this in this one we have service bus namespace, and inside the namespace we have uh, queues and topics. So topics and subscription we definitely will not have time. So I'm not even discussing on that. Uh, we'll we'll see in the next episode when we are doing event up we can bring these topics or next to next episode. So I would like to take a real quick two minutes while we are discussing. 
So uh, there are other couple of sessions are there. After that, we will be doing three uh, three hours revision sessions. So what will happen is that's what we are planning from sep September. Rashmita, you can pitch in. Uh, so there will be three three hour session. That's like an uh, revision, entire revision. It will purely we will not even discuss a single uh, theoretical stuff. It's purely like a labs. So Microsoft has got uh, 12 labs. So we are clubbing four, four labs. Assuming that within next nine hours, we should be able to cover all those demos. So if needed, we'll create a fourth session like September, October, November, monthly ones, because you need to chew those uh, four labs. Each lab itself is one hour to one hour, 30 minutes. So combining those four labs and bringing in some real time uh, scenarios, it will still be larger. But what I'm telling is it, we will uh, see that we can uh, complete it in a decent nine hours. If not, we'll extend to a 12 hour session. That should be fine. So that will be starting from September. Uh, Rashmita will be publishing it. And uh, I'm planning for once this AZ204 series is done, uh, I have three options. I want uh, people to audit it uh, AZ 900. That's one certification. I'm sending it. AZ 900. That's one. And uh, AZ uh, AI 900 and EP 900 or AZ AZ 104. So I am planning this and a microservices series. So I'll explain what this microservices series, but I'll take only 30 seconds to one and a half minute. I'll not go deep into that one. I don't want to derail our existing session. So please vote. Uh, what would you like you guys want to uh, to discuss? Is it AI 900 or DP 900 or AZ 104 or microservices? You guys can please uh, vote it. So. Uh, AZ. Uh, oh, that uh, Kubernetes definitely AKS under the microservices, but I would uh, see not ready and uh, uh, must sure. Okay. Giri Pawan. Neha Gupta. Okay, we can do this model. I'm seeing. Uh, AI series, I mean one certification series and one the microservice series, but I'll quickly walk you through that one. I understood the pulse, uh, but please don't get derailed. That is a long journey. Uh, this is the microservice series. I started working on this one. This is a proposed architecture. It's not going to get completed anywhere less than one and a half year. Um, I don't want to lie saying that we can complete in five sessions or 10 sessions, but it is not going to take anything less than one and a half years because this to create this kind of big application, you definitely need a bunch of uh, uh, team members like testers, developers, senior engineers, tech leads, architects, enterprise architect. But if you want to do all these things like microservice with Mongo, microservice with Redis, Microservice with Postgres, Microsoft with MySQL, even Buzz, SQL Server, Enterprise Service was Kafka, our service was RabbitMQ, aggregators, API gateways, mobile apps, server side apps, spa apps, spa admin, health checks, webworks, alerts and monitoring, Gifana, Kripana, Kubernetes, Docker, whatnot. I mean, pronouncing all these terms itself, I'm getting tired. I might need to have an extra break fast now after this. Uh, so that's one and uh, to a decent extent you guys can uh, see I'm I'm working behind the scenes on all these things, but uh, but you can see this even the Terraform and uh, Kubernetes. How do you uh, how do you do this deployment to the Kubernetes? How do you do it to the Docker Docker compose? Um, lot of lot of things like uh, infrastructure uh, infrastructure as a code and uh, build pipeline release pipeline GitHub actions automation, everything. I mean, it's um, to create one microservice itself. You need a decent amount of uh, eight to 10 sessions anywhere near that. 
And once you create it, then you will grow on top of that. But I think Rashmita and I will touch base on that to see um, to start one certification series, uh, one or two episodes a month and one uh, Jumbo series. I mean, Jumbo like two to three hours, decent hours on uh, uh, on microservice. Uh, yeah, now I got the pulse what the folks are. Uh, uh, folks are uh, looking at it. Um, yeah, that's uh, was this uh, Pawan. This is uh, covered Pawan. Uh, uh, post code in Springer Java. Sure, because the intention of doing this microservice is um, uh, playing with Java. Uh, at least one of the microservice. I can't uh, uh, guarantee that the entire thing is there, but at least want to show one flavor like one small microservice in uh, Node.js with TypeScript and one microservice in Golang and one in Python and one in something like that. OK. Uh, Sanket, what is that? I didn't understand that. Uh, so for easy 204 solutions, can yep. most of the solutions available are on .NET only. So for okay. us who are Java followers, it is difficult to understand that code. So, yeah, I understood yeah. that. I'll get, I'll get something. Uh, I'll get something. Uh, when we are doing the September uh, revision kind of thing, Sanket, I I'll see that what best I can do it within my uh, limited knowledge on Java and this one. But uh, I was coding Java in 1999, so long ago. But I still remember the fundamentals. I'll I'll get something for you. Sure. Okay, let me come back to this one. Um, thank you so much, guys. I think uh, Gayatri or someone you posted some queries. I see this. Will will shall we take the queries uh, at the end because we need to cover this. And if at all I'm not able to answer this, definitely I'll answer on the uh, meetup or in the next session. I think is it Gayatri? You posted a couple of questions. Yeah, it's Gayatri and Priyanka. Okay, yeah, we will we'll take the questions. Yeah, uh, both the questions we'll take it up, but let let me complete this piece and we'll see. Huh? Okay, shallow. Thanks. Um, so let's come back to this one. So service bus, we have a resource group, and that resource group will create this one. I mean, uh, I'll dismantle it. We'll create it again. So here we'll have the queues, and uh, hey guys, anyone was. Uh, jumping out, it will be very helpful for me. Please uh, drop a line of feedback because that helps me personally improve myself. Even if you have some uh, feedback which is negative, please don't hesitate. Put it for me. I didn't like this or I didn't like this because that really helps me. So I definitely request you guys, anyone who's dropping earlier than uh, 1030, please drop a feedback, whether it is positive or negative. I'm not going to fight or chase you people, but it will definitely help me grow or refine my way of teaching or the content or anything. Please feel free. OK, thank you so much uh, in advance. So we'll see this. We have the queues. And. Uh, here. We, we spoke about one point, the polling. That's what we will see that now. Let's come back here. OK, let's come back here. And I will start the message receiver. So we are not pulling this guys. So this message receiver, I'm starting it. So in the Azure storage queue, you have to pull. Hey, do you have any message in the queue? Now here, this is we said that it's it's not pulling until unless even if it is in Azure storage queue, if you write an uh, Azure function with the queue triggered, the the mechanism they hooked up those uh, triggers. So whenever you drop a message, even in Azure storage queue, that goes and hits this Azure function. But here, the um, uh, push mechanism has been built in in the service bus queue. We'll see that how it happens. So this is here. We'll go and create uh, a message. Let's assume like you can create a lot of other options are there. At this point of time, I'll just touch uh, uh, basics or fundamentals kind of thing. So let's assume that uh, order ID A101. Price. 
right? So I just send this one. The message has been sent. There's no message because as soon as you drop the message, it pushed a notification to this processor application saying that, hey, there's a message available. Do you want to take it? This guy grabbed it. Now I stop this processor. Now I'm sending another message. One zero two. Price is triple two dot this one. Now send this message. It's sending a message. Now I do a start the message. The message is here, and it's it's not going anywhere. It's here. Right now, you can uh, select this. You see, you have a lot of other options here where uh, you can go and check the message. If I start this guy receiver again, you'll see that that guy will receive it. Okay, so that's one thing. And let's come back to that Azure function, the session which I was speaking about. I don't want to. It's not in source, it's in starter files. There's a mini project four. And mini project three or two is also something. Yeah, I don't know why I'm coming into this one. It should be in starter files. What is mini project? Yeah, this one. Right to service bus queue. So right to service bus queue is what uh, just go and Watch this episode, episode seven and eight. So here, what is happening is it's a timeward function. Okay, you see this. That's uh, there's a timeward function as well as there is a HTTP function also. I've written both. So I think three mini project three is the timer one. This is when someone sends a message. It sends a, hits this HTTP. It drops a message to the service bus queue. Okay, and once you write it, so there is another Azure function that reads it from the service bus queue. It reads the message and it is creating that output binding. Okay, and that output binding is what it writes it to a uh, blob storage. And that blob storage, the moment someone writes a file into the blob storage, we read that blob storage message and we'll create a entry in the table. So here, if you Visualize that. So there is a service bus queue, and there is a blob storage, and there is a table, Azure table storage. So all three things are there in that. So now, first thing is you, a user is calling an Azure function. Or that Azure function is writing to the service bus queue, step one. And as soon as someone writes a message, there is an Azure function too, which reads this message and creates a file inside the blob storage. And the third Azure function picks up this file inside the blob storage and writes the uh, table entry. Watch this episode, guys. This mini project three. I don't know in which episode I spoke, whether it is in session seven or eight, but definitely we can look at it when we are doing revision uh, in September. OK, now let's come back and create these resources. How do you create the resource? We have seen that uh, fundamental thing, uh, the polling mechanism. You were speaking about the polling mechanism. We saw that. Uh, what the, sorry, non polling mechanism, the push mechanism. That's what we have seen it. Now, what do I do is I'll come back over here and I'll select it. And I'll delete. Let me delete this. Let's create it. Recreate that one. Also, I think that's Rand will create a new one, the random one. Uh, we'll remember 1786Y. OK, no, my that's cool. So let me go ahead and create these things. I'll copy that. And I think to a decent extent we spoke about uh, this one also. About the Azure shell. Why should we use Azure shell and the file share which has been linked behind this? We have seen. I think we have discussed. Just give me one minute. I'll have a glass of water. OK, 
Okay. And from this, we'll create these variables. I'm just pasting it. So you want, you want to check that. What is the resource group name? Uh, echo. Now dollar. OK, that's. The service bus 2902, we are safe. It's not using anywhere near. So we are creating a, we're creating a resource group and that resource group has been created. So the proof, it will come back. Let's give it a time. Right, so it has created the resource group. Now the next thing what we have to do is we need to create a namespace. So copy paste that and create the namespace. It is, it will take a little bit time uh, to create it, but uh, see that the resource group is here. And, and there you go, the service bus namespace has been created. If this is one of the, you see this, some of the subscription IDs and GUIDs has been masked. This is uh, AZ mask, uh, AZ mask Chrome extension. Okay, even if you want to use, you can use this AZ mask Chrome extension that will mask these things. I don't know whether that is good or bad, but uh, someone told me I started using it. Uh, so it has created that. Okay, it didn't even complete, but I think it is provisioning it. Oh, it's active. Okay, let's see that. Let's see, should give us control. Okay, that's done. Once that namespace is done, you will have to work with the queue. Okay, that's in this queue. So another thing what we can do is to automate the things, to automate the things, we can put all these things inside a single file and call this uh, create service bus namespace service bus q dot sh okay i'm just creating it and uh, let's create it where is that file uh where is that file okay here it is and i will expand this ls iphone l and this file doesn't have now if you see that create it will not allow you to work now ch mode give an execute permission to that file now you do ls iphone l now you see that it has got an execute permission now if you do create now Create hyphen S B N S. Is it here or not? This bus namespace. Okay. Now see that you don't need to execute one by one command here. I mean, just for our Understanding I executed this one by one command, but what you can do is you can put all these commands, group it and create a dot sh file. It's similar to the bat file and uh, then execute it. So you don't need to uh, wait for copy pasting this command. Ensure that you are uh, exporting those variables, isn't it? So if you export the variables or in some mechanism, pass these values to this shell script, maybe through command line arguments, or you export it or put it in some other file, ask it to go and read it. You do any mechanism, but 
the net net is automation more towards the automation. See this within this few minutes of time. We are seeing that we were able to create two resource groups, two service bus namespace and two service bus queues. Isn't it without even sweating? We are able to do that. OK, now I'm going to create a third one. See the power of automation. No mistakes. All are. Similar resources. So it's see this how easy it is. Just you do it. Click one after other thing and things are getting provisioned for you. I mean, maybe it's an uh, imperative way or declarative way or infrastructure as a code. See what best works. You have to use that, right? See the power. See that we got three resources within few minutes of time without even you opening a portal or clicking a single button, right? And one more catch here in this one when you're creating it, maybe through the PowerShell or through the Azure CLI shell scripts or .ps1 file or any mechanism. So in this mechanism, what happens is you need to be a little careful. The version of uh, PowerShell module or the AZ CLI you're using it, if they bump, if you bump up that and there is a breaking change, then your existing script will break. So what does that mean is if I do AZ version, so my current command, my current command is working on this, this version of this one. Okay, it's in Azure CLI 2.38. Okay, imagine a scenario 2.39 has got a breaking change inside this service bus namespace creation or service bus queue. So in that case, if you bump up the version of AZ CLI on your box and you execute the script, it doesn't work. OK, please ensure that. But when you go towards the bicep or arm template, we pretty much saw that the arm template, it is marrying itself to a particular version of the API. That means if you come and see this one, it is clearly getting married to an API. See this when you're creating storage account, you're saying that, hey, storage account, use this API version. And for queue service, use this API version. Suppose in the same template, in the same template, if you're creating the service versus queue or SQL Server or Cosmos DB, whatever it is, and it needs a separate API. Very well, that can be because see this, right? Right now, these three of the resources are getting married to this API version. And imagine you're creating a keyboard that gets married to a, some other API version. Mm -hmm. Fine, both can coexist. But this resource, whatever this queue or the queue service or the storage account is depending on this, it will work even after one year or two years until unless this API exists and there is no breaking change in that. So this is more reliable. OK, I'm not telling that the command line and the power cells are res less reliable. They are also 100% reliable without doubt. You, see, you we have seen how powerful they are. Within few minutes, we are able to create three resource groups with three different service bus namespace, three queues without sweating, all with a click or an enter button. We are able to create it. So see that which one works good, but I would strongly suggest going ahead with the infrastructure as a code because the infrastructure as a code has got that uh, power. I would like to show that uh, here. I mean, don't get derailed. Just wanted to uh, showcase on that piece infrastructure as a code. See this your entire infrastructure that will be in your branch. You do a pull request for rule of four set of eyes, two sets of eyes, four eyes. So someone will review and they approve that. And once you raise a pull request, it get all the templates gets validated. Maybe the ARM templates or the bicep templates or a Terraform templates, whatever it is, it has to get validated. Build works. Then someone approves. Four eyes, two sets of eyes. They approve. The code gets merged to the master branch. And the continuous integration builds will generate the artifacts and put it in drop location. And someone kicks in the release, it reads these artifacts and deploy your infrastructure. 
no mistakes. You've seen that the power of whatever we are doing and the advantage of having it inside the the advantage of having it inside the source code repositories, you know that how your infrastructure has either grown or shrinked or over a period of time, how it is changing, who is changing, why everything gets tracked. OK, coming back to our discussion. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's work on this one. Let me switch back to. This one. And again, I've given the links, guys, um, of uh, the source code, the service bus queue. We have created this, and uh, and we have seen this uh, service bus message payloads and serialization. At least to a decent extent, we have seen uh, how do we, we'll see that in the programming while we are doing it. And uh, this is also we have seen similar to the storage browser, this uh, service bus explorer. There is a Windows application also. Azure service bus. I used to use it. Um, this this one, the pretty old one, but very solid. OK, oh, they are updating it. I, I really love this tool, serious tool, because if you go and uh, see this one, uh, it's very powerful. You you can see that what all the queues are there. You can get into the dead letter queues. You can get into the topics and everything. I mean, a lot of it's a powerful tool. I really love this. I have never seen these many options and all these things. And you can go um, and replay this. If at all some of the queues goes to the dead letter queue, you can replay that and push it into another queues. A lot of things are there. Serious tool. I mean, uh, check that if you want to play around this service bus explorer, I would uh, uh, suggest it. I mean, I love this tool a lot. Uh, you know, uh, this is one of the option pretty much for a uh, Windows guys. And uh, now in the portal, you have this facility. We can use it. Which one do we select? Let's select this one. That's what the first one which we created it, uh, 2902. Uh, we use use this one. I'm sorry. I'm a little crazy on the numerology. Incremental. Okay, we use this number. Uh, you can come into this. And let's get into the queue. And this is service bus explorer. I mean, it doesn't have those many features of this one. Uh, search for this service bus explorer. Okay, this uh, very famous one. Uh, since it's there since eight years. Very powerful tool. I, I really love that. OK, now. Well, let's come back to this our coding. Check that. So the first thing is what we need to do is we will go back. One step. And get into this service bus namespace. And from that namespace, let's get. To the. Let's wait. OK. That's one more. That's my personal choice. I always use the secondary connection string. I don't know why, but got habituated. So this is the new one which we have created now. If I'm not wrong. This. Fine. This already exists. Okay, it doesn't have anything. It doesn't have in dead letter queue. Let's use this one. So we already copied it. So this guy doesn't have any messages. Let's go to this queue and I'll copy this. Come back here. Go to the coding and message sender. Right more click on this. Uh, manage user secrets. I strongly suggest please. Stay away from. 
tab settings. OK, and what is the Q name? That's the Q name. Perfect. So let's come back to this code. And let's see the messages at a high level. What are we doing here? Just wanted to show a little bit of uh, flavors. We are first. Send a single message. That means if you come here, it is sending single text message and we are serializing this order object. So it has got four properties. Order ID is good and order date is default to date time now quantity and price. So we are sending one text message and one order message. And then the next task is send batch of messages. So we are getting a bunch of orders, three orders. It's there, whatever is here. We are getting those three orders. And we are creating this uh, service bus batch message. And for each of the orders, we are adding it. Now see this is the content type we are specifying here. This application JSON. And then here service bus sender dot send message async. You're sending this batch message. And receiving a single message, we are getting single message. We are printing the body of that message and just wanted to show that we can push it to the dead letter queue also. OK, just a uh, little bit of uh, flavors. We'll, we need to stop. No, we don't have time. So let's go ahead and do it in full action. Uh, see that we did a bunch of options. Let's come back to this guy and uh, Pick the message from start. We got four messages. Whatever we sent it, you see this this four ID. And uh, maybe we would have deleted one of the message also. Well, see that. We would have deleted one of the message. So here. Yeah. So one thing, let's go back and check this. There should be one in the dead letter queue. So given links of all those things, and let's see the power of the polling sorry, push mechanism. So I'll start this receiver. Start a new instance. The receiver starts and it receives all the previous four orders. And, and now what I can do is I can go back and Ignite this. Start a new instance. Now this is sending the messages and you can see this as and when it is sending the messages. This guy is receiving the second set of messages. See this the hello world message and apart from the four orders. Now if you go and see that, I think I'm deleting the hello world message. If I'm not wrong. Oh, it already peaked everything. And the uh, dead letter Q, there's uh, how many? There's one in the dead letter Q. That hello world, whatever it's there, we are pushing it here. So that's it for today. And anyone has got any feedback, you can speak. And uh, Hello. Anyone? Go back and see the queries. I'm going to We'll start that way, folks. We'll start with one certification series. I mean, every month, one or two episodes and one episode uh, of microservice. That will be um, two to three hours decent. I mean, a strong commitment. Okay, Gayatri, let's come back to the queries. I think two people, Gayatri and uh, who else? You both have asked. Yeah, my question is just a simple question on the expiry. Uh, 
you said seven days so i was curious if you know you no, no, no. for long that, or, um, we can we can we can configure uh, that is also part of the uh, part of uh, this one here that so uh, expiry expiry we can configure but at one place you can have expiry to individual messages and in azure storage queue that expiry is for the entire queue okay thank you okay that's it. and after that there was one more query Pri priyanka which is editor you're doing this is she in now or she dropped it? I'm using these are the editors. Uh, I use uh, Visual Studio Code and I use Visual Studio 2022 Enterprise and the browser. And two things we have used. One is uh, Azure Storage Browser and Service Bus Explorer. Both are built into Azure portal. Cool. Cool. Any any other queries? Any feedback? Yeah, I'll share the learn link again. Oh, she already uh, pasted it. Rashmi already pasted it. I'm just copying it from above and just uh, cool. So let's. Uh, the next session is 20 and 21. That will be in August, two sessions. And September, we'll have that revision session. Three hours, one Saturday. Most probably, August 24th is what we are planning. So we'll do a minimum of four. I don't want to restrict, but if it is the time is not enough for covering four demos, it's like quick purely hands on labs and revision. So in next uh, three months, you, we will touch upon all these 12 modules, hands on labs, purely hands on for the three, three hours Saturday. OK, okay guys, anything else? Bridgesh, thanks, Bridgesh. Thanks, Gayatri. Gayatri, the expiry is configurable. Okay. Yeah, who's this? Uh, Arka. So it was a nice session though so yeah thanks i'm arka can you arka arka thanks thank you thanks cool anyone else okay if there are no queries uh, thanks for joining and if you have any feedback, please, uh, positive or negative, please feel free. I will be uh, very much happy to get the feedback because if at all there is something, even if one guy is saying which is is not liking or there might be, uh, I might be missing something. OK, so I would like to refine myself. So always I will ask feedback from all my sessions. Uh, Thanks. How to pronounce your name? Pundalik. Is that? Yeah, yes, yes. Thanks. Thanks. Cool, guys. Thank you so much. If you have any queries, please feel free. I think you have my Twitter ID. Surishankar, I will post my Twitter ID. And I think you guys have my uh, GitHub account where I will be playing every day and uh, please feel free and also i strongly suggest that go back to the series and i told the pattern how it will be in speaker series there will be especially microsoft reactor folders where we have all these things and you can find out whether it is session 10 or 11 12 it's corresponding i think session 16 i didn't upload the files for some reason i was lazy but i'll see i'll up if i get some time i'll upload it but anyways the three major 
uh, revision sessions, whatever we are doing, that's very, very important. Let's uh, get it. Suri Shankar, you want it? I will give you, sir. This is my specifically for this Git uh, reactor series. And the pattern is same. If you don't find the files, you need to go back one year previous. The name pattern will be same. Speaker series 2021. Here it is 2022. You can go back to speaker series 2021. You'll have the remaining episode. This is my uh, main link. You will find all these things. And uh, these are for the eShop, which we will start it once we let's complete this and revision. I want more people to uh, clear this AC 204. I'll be the most happiest person when I hear that. Okay. Chile, it's and very thank you so much for joining. And uh, please feel free to. Uh, grab that and try. See you in August. Bye, guys. Have a good rest of the day. Stay safe. Bye, bye. Rashmita. Bye, bye. Thanks, thanks, Swami. Thank you all for joining us. Bye, guys.